Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for Today in History where we get to share with you uh, things that happened on this day many years ago. And I'm going back to the year 2013. It's a story from Mali and of course involves Chadian soldiers. On this day, the 12th of April in 2013, there was a suicide bomb that went off and uh, four Chadian soldiers were killed. Five civilians also were injured in an attack by two suicide bombers in Kidal, Mali. Uh, it was a Friday morning and a group of Chadian soldiers stationed in Kidal went to the local market to buy supplies at around 9.50 a.m., according to, of course, to eyewitnesses. Uh, one of the group of uh, suicide bombers made its debut and the suicide bomber detonated his explosive belts in a nearby market stall. According to the residents, the incident occurred on a street commonly frequented by Chadian soldiers, located about 100 meters from the town market itself. Uh, the first bomber was said to have been neutralized before he could explode his belt, but a second one succeeded, letting out a deadly blast that destroyed parts of the market and also injured five bystanders. The expected death toll was likely to rise. And following the explosion, army checkpoints were placed in the four main entrances to Kidal in fear that many or, or more suicide bombers can infiltrate the city as early as they did that morning. Uh, the fourth Chadian soldier who was injured in the attack died overnight, eventually in a hospital in Gao. Uh, three other wounded soldiers were evacuated to a military hospital in Bamako, where uh, from their military officials claimed that they were in no life-threatening conditions. All right, and that, all these happened on this day, 12th of uh, April in 2013. And it brings, of, of course, um, more of these conversations as to what happens with um, um, insecurity and terrorism mm -hmm. in this part of the world in Africa. Um, over time, in the last couple of years, we've also heard of uh, the efforts by the Chadian military and the, uh, you know, the president um, to rid his country and mm -hmm. that part of his country of uh, Boko Haram and you know, whatever type of insurgent group um, exists in those places. And there has been, you know, recorded levels of success, um, you know, according to him. Mm -hmm. It's also a reminder of when suicide bombs were popular um, as a means of terrorism uh, in, in, in um, West Africa, mostly here in Nigeria. It was around that era. It started around 2010, I believe. And all through that period, you know, from former President Goodluck Jonathan's administration, there was a lot of yeah, these lot. suicide bombs. Yeah. Uh, um, after his administration, of course, the tactics have changed mm -hmm. um, and we're sent to... Yeah, so we don't have suicide bombings anymore in Nigeria. You have banditry, kidnappings and all of yes. that. Right, but you see, the thing about the story you just took is that same president, same Idris Deby, Idris Deby. It's the one that's going for a re-election again. I mean, he's been there for years, but let's not dwell on that, right? <laughs> so Osalge talked about <laughs> charging soldiers and the suicide bombers. Let me tell a different path, yeah? Let's take you to the U.S. Uh, same day, the 12th of April, 2013, yeah? Yeah, here we go now. I have it. Uh, see, I got caught up in Osage's story, and um, I'm still trying to talk about that. But this is the one. I want to talk about a, a Grammy Award-winning singer. His name is James Brown. So the soul singer was freed from prison 16 months. But before he went to prison, this is what happened. Singer James Brown, uh, he was moved to uh, work in a release center in 1990 after seven for 15 months. The Grammy winning soul singer uh, was freed from prison after 16 months so that he can begin a work release program. He was serving concurrent six year terms for leading police on a wild border crossing chase in 1988. So he will enter a work release program acting as a sort of a counselor with the ICON and Banwell County's Community Action Commission. And so he also would stay in the office during the day and will return on nights and weekends to the Lower Savannah Work Center in the same place. So here are the charges, right? Charges against Brown included failure to stop for police officers in South Carolina and Georgia. Authorities said Brown had tried to run down officers with his pickup truck during a 
wild car chase along the border between the two states in 1988. So the police said that on the 24th of September 1988, fracas began when Brown bust into a Savannah office building he owned and began waving a shotgun at people attending an insurance seminar. So authorities said uh, apparently Brown was angry that someone had used his private bathroom uh, and then he tested positive for the drug PCP after his September 1988 arrest and pleaded no contest to possession of the same substance following an earlier incident in Icon County. So what jumps out at you in this story? For me, here, here's it. Brown was angry because someone used his private bathroom. Yes, and he has every right to be angry, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> Duh. I mean, for, so you for start someone who your, had your gun. Well, you know, you also mentioned that he tested positive for PCP. Oh yeah, you know, okay, so there's, yeah, there's so. also the drug, you know, <laughs> aspect of the it. The effect, you know, and for someone who had a you know career that spanned over fifty years, he eventually died in two thousand and six uh, from pneumonia. Yeah. Um, but for someone who had a career that massive, and you know, who is you know a co complete legend and icon in, the, in you know black music, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, history. Yeah, he is um, legendary. Yeah, every every now and then you expect that they will have their own outburst. They will have their yeah. own you know times when they they to totally lose control of themselves. Else, so he has expected. bragging rights. That what you're saying. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So, so this is what also caught my attention. The uh, system there. So he went to jail, and then when he came out, he walked. Yeah. This is what you called correctional. You know, that's what they say. Our facilities in Nigeria are supposed to be correctional facilities. Maybe they should imbibe stuff like this. Yes, you know, and how many people go to jail and come out better people yeah. uh, here in Nigeria? You know, and, uh, you know, there's also been conversations about we should change some of our laws to mm -hmm. make it easy for people to do community service instead of going to jail. Uh, there are certain crimes that you commit in Nigeria that you don't necessarily need to be to spend five years in jail. But it's My. so bad that people who haven't even been sentenced or convicted of anything, uh, you know, would spend a decade in prison awaiting trial and come out worse and come out worse What's absolutely yeah. so so there's a lot of lapses in our criminal justice system a lot of lapses in our correctional uh, system that um it it, it would take a miracle to fix mm -hmm. because you know there's not you know been any political will or anybody who has shown enough interest to see that these things are faulty mm -hmm. um, people should be able to do community service people should be able to to sweep marketplaces because they committed petty crimes. There's True. so many, so many of these crimes that don't necessarily <laughs> right. need to go to. You don't need to go to jail. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you should go. You know, and, and teach for a couple of months as your punishment. You should be able to sweep. You, you know, should go places. teach. Yeah, I mean, so what if you're not a qualified help, help teacher? It, well, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> okay. help helping. You know, the education sector. Helping yeah, maybe sweep like you said. Or clear some grasses. Yes, you know, um, instead of going to jail. But we even, well, instead, we just throw people in jail for, you know, five, six years for crimes that act actually mean absolutely nothing. Someone steals a phone, um, you send him to jail for four, five years. Why? Someone steals, you know, a chicken, you know, you, you, they, they send you to jail. Why? You see what you just said? You steal a phone, they send you to jail, and you probably go there and learn how to steal a car. You become worse. You know, a lot of times you become worse and, you, you know, your anger with the system even increases mm -hmm. um, over, over that period that you're in jail. So, yes, uh, James Brown is our second um, discussion this morning today in history. And, of course, we also shared with you uh, an incident of suicide bombing that led to the death of four Chadian soldiers in the year 2013 in Mali. That's for today in history. Stay with us. First major conversation we're getting into now, the suspension of the National Association of Resident Doctors strike. They are meant to resume work today. And we're having a conversation next with the president of NARD, Dr. Okai Hiesui Uyilawa. Stay with us. Yeah.